On today's show, I'll talk about ellipses, specifically the game of snooker, the light of a dentist's chair, and the San Carlos National Theater. And this is... Welcome! Mathematical tools such as an equation, a theorem or an ellipse basically provide a sort of explanatory background of the world. Still, the ellipse, as we'll see later in the show, has, let's say, a more practical use. But first, what is an ellipse? Since we are at the theatre, let's use light. An ellipse is the intersection of a conical surface, here represented by the spotlight, with a plane. In this case, the stage floor. Notice how the light that spots the singer shapes an ellipse around her. Let's use this spotlight and place a Pilates ball within our light cone, so that its surface is tangent with the surface of the cone. The single point where this ball touches the stage is called the focus of the ellipse. And if we'd hang a larger ball beneath the stage, we would find the second focus of the ellipse. It's commonly accepted that the circle is the most perfect shape of all, but actually, the circumference is merely a particular case of the ellipse. See what happens if we move this spotlight to a direction perpendicular to the stage, bringing both points together. As the two foci approach one another, the ellipse will inevitably degenerate into a circle. So, the ellipse is not a weird circumference, it's the circumference, which is a degeneration of the ellipse. A degenerate, then. A kind of mathematical rigoletto. Got that Oprah reference? Nice. Ellipses are everywhere. It's commonly known that Earth's orbit is an ellipse. Actually, Earth's orbit is not exactly an ellipse, but a rough approximation of an ellipse. This is due to our Moon's disturbance and to other planets of the solar system. Are we misleading our students when we say that Earth's orbit is an ellipse? And the answer is no. The stroke of geniality is to ignore all imperfections. On doing so, we are disregarding noise and focusing on the utterly essential. For example, when watching a not full Moon, one sees half of a circle and half of an ellipse. Of course, that they are neither a perfect ellipse nor a perfect circle. For the simple reason that the Moon is neither a perfect sphere, much less a Pilates ball. Still, the outer part of the Moon, which marks its outline, is part of a circle. When the inside part, which divides the shadow from the illuminated side of the Moon, is part of an ellipse. The ellipse appears in our daily lives more often than we think. For example, if we slant this dish, its shape is an ellipse. Or a glass of water. When a cylindrical glass is tilted, the liquid inside shows the contour of an ellipse. Let's check another curious feature of the ellipse. This pool table has only one hole, and it's located on one of the two foci of the ellipse. If we disregard direction and hit the ball from the other focus, The ball will always make its way into the hole. It's mathematically impossible to miss the hole. Another practical example. It's important that dentistry lamps lights up the patient's mouth and not much else. This prevents the patient from being flash-blinded during procedures. For this, dentistry lamps have a mirror shaped as an ellipse and a bulb placed at one of the foci. 
As the ball trajectory on our pool table, light emanating from the lamp is reflected on the mirror and continues toward the other focus, in this case, the mouth of our soprano. A similar phenomenon occurs at the San Carlos National Theater, but with sound. This auditorium is elliptical shaped. One focus is placed on stage, and the other one is close to the royal balcony. Thus, the sound on stage is reflected in theater walls towards the other focus, the ears of the king. Of course, that in a democracy, it makes no sense to build a whole theater centered in only one person. In short, the dentistry ellipse reflects light, the elliptical pool reflects balls, and this national theater reflects the voice of our soprano. And this is 